Hey folks, Dr. Starr, Silver Spring Medical Center. Um, all right, thanks for tuning in. This is part three of the question of what are the foods that I can eat that will fill me up better that are low in calories. And um, I touched upon that a couple of audio clips ago. By the way, we're only going to take five minutes, so uh, it'll be short and sweet, and you can get on with your day and uh, learn some valuable information at the same time. Um, the most ideal foods, yes, they should be relatively low in calorie, easy to digest, have the water and the nutrients that we need, um, and it should be in the ratio of higher good carbohydrates to lower fat and protein. Across the board, studies, nutritional studies done looking at societies that are the most long-lived, okay? Okinawa, Japan, until um, the last 20 years, until they started westernizing their diet, were the longest-lived humans on the planet, all right? When you look at their diet, and everybody says, oh, come on, doc, they eat a lot of fish. No, 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 no. They eat a small amount of fish. That's not the healthy food in their diet. That just is because they live on an island and they have fish around them. But generally, most of their diet is coming from sweet potatoes and rice and other fruits and vegetables. So you have to eat foods, ideally, to be healthy. The foods that you're eating have to be uh, low in fat, low in, in protein. And everybody says, oh, you need a lot of protein, doc. Yes, you need protein. Let's not forget you need protein two times in your life, mostly protein is a building block for repair and growth, okay, of cells. The two times in our lives where we need the most protein is the first year of life because we go from basically anywhere from 7 to 10 pounds at birth all the way up to about 20, 25 pounds at the end of the first year. That's huge growth. So you need protein, yes. The second time is during the first year of puberty when your body is expanding and growing and it needs a lot of building blocks. After that, once you're past the age of 15 to 20 years old, and I'm assuming most of you are who are listening to this, you're done growing. You're not going to have that much need for new cells to be made. You need repair, but you know the house is already built. You just have to replace a couple of bricks here and there. You don't need a whole lot of protein. You know, The only reason why everyone thinks you need a lot of protein is because the food industry does a really good job of selling it to you. Outside that, there's problems with excess protein. You have too much protein, you're going to have problems. You're going to have more problems than if you have not enough protein. In fact, there's not even a medical condition that describes a protein deficiency because it doesn't exist. Kwashio now before you know, anybody jumps out and says, oh, kwashio is an... No, no, that's not a protein deficiency. That is a calorie deficiency. People who are starving in third world countries are very thin, not because they have a deficiency in protein, but because they have a deficiency in food. It's a big difference, okay? Now, as far as the first year in life, when you go undergo the most growth and development, right? That's when you need the most protein in your life. You would agree with that? Yes, of course, although I can't hear you respond. During the first year of life, most human infants will feed off of mother's milk. That's how nature designed it. If you look at human breast milk, it is only about 6% of the calories coming from protein. 6%. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The food pyramid says that I'm supposed to have 30% protein and 30% fat and 30% uh, carbohydrates. Now that only equals 90, so maybe it's about 33% in the third. Now that's a lot of fat. 30% of your diet of calories come from fat, 30% protein, really? The average American eats about 18 to 22% of their calories coming from protein. That's a lot of protein, a lot of meat, a lot of fish, a lot of, a lot of dairy products in particular. All right, so why would you say that if you need a lot of protein during your first year of growth, and that's only 6%, why are we taking in 20% or more, or even the recommended 30%? It's food for thought, pun intended. Now, going back to really good foods to eat, you can make a smoothie out of fruit this morning I'll give you an example I made two cups of grapes two bananas two dates and a handful of blackberries threw it in a blender blended it up comes out to be 658 calories how do I know I'm not that smart I put it into my loseit.com uh, app and it tells me so this morning I ate a smoothie which was about a liter and a half of fluid very yummy very satiating totally got me going through the morning and that's all you need. That's a huge amount of food, and it only is 658 calories. Again, for those of you who are on a restricted portion of the diet, that, you'll get to that. Eventually, you'll want to eat around that for one meal. But it gives you everything that you need. It's easy, takes up space, fills me up, makes me feel good. That's not too much fruit. 
If you only have one banana, you'll be hungry. But have a substantial smoothie. You'll see how well it does for you. Make that a morning breakfast. You'll see the pounds come off. All right. Have a great day. We're at five minutes. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.